the twelve months. Marushka lived in a small cottage in the mountains. Ever since her father had died, her stepmother hadn't had a kind word for her and had made her do all the dirty work in the household. Her stepsister didn't have to work at all. She woke up at noon, and Marushka, who had been on her feet since dawn, was obliged to serve her breakfast in bed. Then Holena would pass the whole day preening, powdering her face, and trying on clothes. One winter day, Olena developed a sudden craving for strawberries. Marushka, she cried, where are you, you lazy bones? Fetch me some wild strawberries from the forest. But sister, there's snow all over the ground. Where could I? Marushka began, but then her stepmother croaked. Why don't you get a move on? Bring us some strawberries right away if you don't want to learn what a beating is. The poor girl knew only too well what a beating was. Resigned to her fate and shivering in her thin jacket, she went out into the snow without knowing which way to turn her steps. The short winter day was fading into night, but she walked on and on over the hills until, to her surprise, she saw a faint glimmer of light far ahead among the trees. Pressing on, she came to a forest glade. In the middle was a small fire, and around the fire Twelve men were sitting on slabs of granite. Men of good will, please, allow me to warm my hands at your fire. Go ahead and warm yourself, said the white-bearded man who sat on the highest stone holding a mighty cudgel. But what are you doing all alone in the mountains on such a cold night? I'm looking for wild strawberries, answered Marushka. Don't you know that you have to wait until June for strawberries? rasped the old man. Of course I know it, but my stepmother promised me a beating if I don't bring some back with me. Mmm, growled Whitebeard. He sounded like a gust of the north wind in Marushka's ears. Brother June, he said to a young man sitting on one of the smallest stones on the other side of the fire, come over and tend the fire for a while. The young man took the mighty cudgel from him, seated himself on the highest stone, and waved the cudgel over the fire. The flames jumped up in a roaring bonfire. The surrounding snow began to thaw, and as it melted, the grass sprang up from the ground in bright green shoots, and buds swelled on the bare branches. In the next instant, strawberries bloomed in the grass, dropped their petals, and the first fruit reddened like little rubies among the leaves. Quick, Marushka, gather them up, cried the young man. Jolted out of her bewilderment, Marushka started picking the red berries. When her pitcher was half full, the old man stood up. You have enough? Now head for home, quickly, he told her. Hardly had Marushka time to breathe 
Thank you very much, men of goodwill. When the old man was already stirring the fire with the cudgel, the flames diminished again as she ran toward home, and snow again shrouded the forest. Back at the cottage, her stepmother and Helena didn't offer a single word of thanks. Instead, they snatched the pitcher out of her hands and sent her to clean the pigsty. Marushka didn't get to taste one strawberry herself. A couple of days later, Helena remarked that she'd like to smell a bouquet of violets. She told Marushka to go and pick some for her in the forest. In vain, Marushka tried to reason with her. This time, Helena and her mother threatened her with the worst beating of her life if she didn't bring them what they wanted. Again, Marushka headed across the mountains wherever her feet carried her. And again, she came to the little fire in the forest glade. Now, what are you looking for in the snow? grunted the old man with the cudgel in his hand. Violets, said Marushka with bated breath. Don't you know it's winter? bellowed Whitebeard. Yes, I do, but my sister and stepmother will beat me terribly if I don't bring them a bouquet of violets. The old man lowered his brow. He said, Brother May, come over and tend the fire for a little while. The young man next to the one called June stood up to take the cudgel and the highest seat. When he waved the cudgel over the fire, the flames rose and the snow melted all around. The birds started to sing in the budding trees, the grass shoots appeared, and soon the meadow was sprinkled with violets. Gather them up, girl! Marushka didn't wait to be told twice. She began hurriedly to pick the flowers. When she had collected a small bouquet, the old man returned to his place and reached for the cudgel. She thanked him and headed home as the snow started to cover the mountain again. Of course, she was put to work as soon as she entered the door, while her stepmother and her sister Helena snatched the bouquet out of each other's hands to breathe in its fragrance. It wasn't long before Helena fancied something new. Get up, you lazy bones, she yelled. Bring me some fresh apples. But, sister, unheeded went Marushka's tearful entreaties. Out you go, ordered her stepmother, and don't come back without fresh apples, or we'll beat you to death. And she stuck a basket in Marushka's hand and pushed her out the door. What was Marushka to do? The wretched girl dragged her feet in the snow. She stumbled. She couldn't see where she was going for the tears streaming down her face. But at last, she came to the same clearing in the forest. And she told the patriarch on the highest stone that she would certainly die if she didn't bring home fresh apples. Brother September, bellowed the old man, frowning, come over and tend the fire. The flames leaped into the air as a man with a short yellow beard took over the cudgel. The snow melted before Marushka's eyes. Buds sprouted into leaves and blossoms and then began to fade. 
Small apples appeared on the trees. They grew bigger. They turned yellow. They reddened. Trick, Marushka. Gather them up. Marushka shook an apple tree, but only one apple dropped into her apron. She wanted to shake the tree again, but the old man took hold of the cudgel and roared. Be gone, Marushka. You must be on your way. She thanked him and ran off as the twelve men and the fire disappeared in a swirl of cold, brittle snowflakes. On her return, her stepmother and Helena scolded her for bringing only one apple. She stuffed herself with apples, but thought a tiny sour one would be enough for us, they said. But sister, they wouldn't let me take any more. I was glad to get this one. Nonsense, cried Helena. I will go and get a bushel of them myself. Paying little attention to Marushka's explanation of where the magic orchard was, she dressed herself in thick furs and scarves and set off for the mountain. After a long walk, Helena came upon the fire in the glade. She neither greeted the man nor asked for permission to warm herself, but pushed two brothers aside to stretch her hands over the flames. What are you looking for? Alone in the snow? Asked the white bearded man curiously. It's none of your business, you nosy old fool. But if you must know, I am looking for apples, and I don't have time to waste on a gray beard like you. Now, why don't you shut up? And she headed into the forest. Brother February, said Old Man December, come over and tend the fire. One of the youngest brothers, a boy with icy gray eyes, took his place and waved the cudgel over the fire. The flames dropped down until they were almost extinguished, and soon a blizzard enveloped the forest. lasted three days. On the fourth day, the stepmother wrapped herself in furs and went into the mountains to look for Helena. Nothing was ever heard of them again. But that winter, people heard a pack of wolves howling fiercely on the mountainside. Marushka went about her work as usual. She wasn't lonely, as the cow, the goat, and the chicken had always been her only friends. But when the thaw came, and the streams, rivers, and waterfalls broke through their frozen armor and ran singing down the valley, something made her stop working now and then and look toward the mountain and dream. She didn't even know what she was dreaming about. And maybe she married before the apples reddened in the orchards. And maybe she didn't marry at all. Who knows? 
Ask the old blacksmith's wife. She's the biggest gossip in the village.